order the 12th regular meeting of the 2019-2020 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? When you provide genuine appreciation, you will rarely find opposition. Thank you very much. Will the clerk please call the roll? There are 10 present. And then, uh, would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is confirmation of mayor's appointments. Uh, Assistant City Attorney Thomas Cameron. Honorable member. Honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Patrick Siebold to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll? Can I? Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to public forum. There's no one this evening. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a presentation, Wisconsin Active Together and What It Means for Sheboygan by Chad Pelichek, the Director of Planning and Development. So we're gonna see how good the technology is. So what I'm gonna talk about tonight is the Wisconsin Active Together and the uh, reason for the city moving forward with this and what it means with, for the community. Uh, so late last year, we became one of the, I think 49th community to become a Wisconsin Active Together community. And what this is, is really about getting people out and being active within their community, whether it's running, walking, other outdoor sports and activities. Um, so. We apply, this Wisconsin Active Together was a collaboration, a network across the uh, state of a bunch of communities that came together and wanted to share resources and ideas. Um, we actually applied for this thinking that at the same time that we applied for the bicycle friendly designation that we received through the American Bicycle Federation, um, typically a community will go after either one or the other of these designations and then move forward and we were fortunate enough to get both of them. So now we uh, are an, one of the American Bicyclists Association Bicycle Friendly Communities, the bronze, uh, bronze and we celebrated that late last year as well as a uh, Wisconsin Active Together community. So this is really about the choices we make are driven by the choices we have. So if we are providing these amenities to our residents and visitors that that it'll encourage people to get out and participate. We all know that we hear about obesity rates, we hear about children not getting enough exercise, adults not getting enough exercise. So it's, this is really about trying to make sure that the decisions we make in the future as community leaders drives kind of this broader uh, health scope in our residents. So why do active communities m matter? Um, for health, safety, social connections, economic impact, environmental impact, and because people like it. Sounds good. 
So there's a lot of challenges, as we know, facing our own state of Wisconsin, and particularly as it relates to our current transportation budget and the need for additional resources and local uh, uh, road improvements. So that's the decreasing share of transportation aids um, is a you know a concern. Uh, programs that fund bicycle fed and infrastructure improvements are underfunded, so we have to look for different ways to do that. Um, there's a, a complete streets law that was repealed in 2015 um, that changed how bicycles and bike, bicycle and pedestrian improvements are made as part of transportation projects. And then local governments can no longer use eminent domains for bike and ped projects. So that was a 2017 uh, budget motion. So these are the partners that are part of the Wisconsin Active Together. Um, a lot of these are state agencies. Um, there is resources that come from the UW-Madison as well. Um, so there are a lot of partners that we know and work with on a daily and, and weekly basis. So the guiding principles behind Wisconsin Active Together is to provide recognition for the growth and forward progress, allowing a bigger range of communities to be a part of it. Uh, it provides a pathway to leverage programs and community engagement towards policy systems and environmental change, and then connects participating communities to resources, training, peer support, accelerating progress, leverages a network of statewide partners, and expects to uh, experts to work towards a common goal of creating visible progress in the community, and lastly, builds a statewide rising tide for support of active communities. So the idea of bringing more people to the table you know, raises the tide. The key strategies or framework for this organization are really empowering the local government and the local action to really make a difference in, in active communities, community engagement, and milestones and outcomes. So we'll look at each one of these uh, in more detail. The goal of the local action uh, is to create a more visible opportunities for active transportation to build excitement, boost use, and reinforce walking, biking, and wheeling as a cultural norm. And there's some examples listed there of, of events that you can do and participate in to try to incur encourage more uh, local action and projects as it relates to bicycle and pedestrians and walking and that kind of stuff. Community engagement, the goal is to create a creativity and novelty on to uncover new possibilities in the built environment, along with the relationship building and connecting to develop a base who care about the sustained progress. So some of these are temporary parklets, which would be taking a parking stall and making it into a uh, small little park. We actually are looking at that as a possibility in the Indiana Avenue corridor and the Michigan Avenue corridor as part of those master plan updates. Um, gathering supporter lists and then participatory photo mapping so you would send people out there to take pictures of your community and then document what uh, people like and dislike. Community impact promoting access and connection to destinations in an active and safe way and help to build the statewide movement. Um, so a number of these things Sheboygan has already done as part of the non-motorized transportation pilot program. Um, the bicycle pedestrian plans uh, workforce policies, mentoring other communities, and safe roads to schools are all things that have been part of the NOMO transportation that the county rolled out a few years ago. So in 2018 and 2019, if we can, so this is the communities that became a Wisconsin Active Together community. Um, they're primarily centered around the Madison area and the eastern half of Wisconsin, um, but it's a resource for other uh, networking opportunities to learn what other people are doing around the state. Um, there's 21 communities impacting about 1.4 million Wisconsin residents in this program, uh, and there's a number of strategies and different ways that they're doing this and, and getting the word out about who they are. So what's next for communities? It's about structuring for a statewide network to support local progress, determining how to do design and land use, and and places to play and be active, and then grow the network connections and evaluate them uh, through partners at UW-Madison. So on a local level, just talking about some of the projects, some of them you're aware of, the non-motorized transportation pilot program that was instituted by the Sheboygan County um, in the past uh, has had a number of successes, and you see those around the community today. The Sheboygan Rebike program, which is a 
donate your used bikes to this program. They operate out of the basement of Paradigm and then they give bicyclists to low and moderate income people that can't afford bikes and they have, have teach people how to rehab their bikes. They've uh, turned over over a thousand bikes since the program has been running. Um, bike lanes as part of road projects, obviously is a key uh, piece of this. Traffic calming, which has was instituted as part of the non-motorized program. This is a, in front of the YMCA. Um, the Taylor Drive Master, the Trailer Drive Trail that spans from Erie Avenue to Payne Avenue, about three miles, um, helps work towards giving people more options of getting out and being active. Uh, the Shoreland 400, this is the piece from Pennsylvania Avenue to North Avenue. And then we have the piece that the council approved the purchase and sale agreement that we're working in the due diligence to extend from Pennsylvania Avenue down to Union Avenue and along Indiana. Uh, in the future years and connecting that kind of north-south path through the entire middle part of the city to connect uh, bicycle and, and pedestrians. And then, as I mentioned, the bicycle-friendly designation where we became a bronze community by the League of American Bicyclists in 2018 um, in impl implementing the goals and objectives of that program as well. And then last but not least, the a multi-use trail that will be part of the new South Point Enterprise Campus, with, which is the business park um, that we just developed last, the last two years on the south side of Sheboygan. Um, we made sure that that included um, some pedestrian walkways, so there's a paved asphalt walkway on the west side of Taylor Drive to allow people that would be in the future working in this location to get out and become active. And it's really that kind of thinking where you're thinking ahead because if you go to a lot of business parks and industrial parks across the state and drive through them, at noon hour you'll see all these people walking in the streets because they don't typically put in any kind of um, pedestrian type uh, system to allow people to get out and be active during their noon hours. So this is really a forward thinking and a saleability piece as part of that park. So that's what I have on the Wisconsin Active together, as I said, both of these will be running in conjunction with the American, with the bicycle friendly designation and the network through the Wisconsin Active Together. So thank you. Next is a special presentation of the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada. GeoFA's Distinguished Budget Presentation Award was received by the City of Sheboygan for 2019. And it was for the 2019 annual program budget. The GFOA is a major professional association serving the needs of appointed, elected, and state and provincial level government officials. The GFOA, the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award represents a significant achievement for the City of Sheboygan who has received the award for the past three years. It reflects on the commitment of the City of Sheboygan and their staff to meet the highest principles of governmental budgeting. In order to receive the budget award, the City had to satisfy nationally recognized guidelines for an effective budget presentation. These guidelines are designed uh, to assess how well a city's budget serves as a policy document, a financial plan, and an operations guide, as well as a communications device. In order to receive this award, the city published a budget document that meets the program criteria. The creation of the entire budget document and achievements of this award would not have been possible without countless hours of work by city staff, in particular, Finance Director Treasurer Marty Halverson and Assistant to the City Administrator Carrie Arends. It reflects on the commitment of the City of Sheboygan to meet the highest principles of government budgeting. Tonight, I take pleasure in presenting this award to our Administrator, Darrell Hoffman, in recognition of his work leading the budget team in the preparation of the 2019 city budget. Ryan's taking a picture. Thank you. Can I say some words? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Um, as, as you indicated, uh, 
this is a very detailed budget and uh, we were very pleased to receive a positive review uh, by the Government Finance Officers Association. It details over $130 million of, of mostly taxpayer funded activity. Uh, it embraces the city's strategic plan uh, as well as incorporates performance benchmarks because as we know, what gets measured gets results. So again, as uh, you indicated, I appreciate uh, all the hard work by uh, management team, uh, their support staff, as well as um, Marty Halverson, as you mentioned, uh, Director of Finance, and uh, he's also the city treasurer, as well as Carrie Aaron's uh, assistant to the city administrator. So again, I uh, gladly accept uh, the presentation of this award. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. This last week, we had uh, 15 visitors from our sister city in Esslingen that toured Sheboygan, Germany. They were headed by Mayor Zieger, Lord Mayor of Esslingen. We toured City Hall, the Fire Department, North High School, Lakeland University, Farm Wisconsin, Farmer's Market, Bookworm Gardens, Three Sheep's Brewery, Concordia Singers Clubhouse. At Lakeland University, we started some discussions on future exchanges between Esslingen um, students in, in, in the, at their university and Lakeland College. Currently, we have exchanges in middle school level and at the high school level. So this would be a whole new uh, group of exchange students that could come to our community and ours that could go to theirs. Uh, we attended a people-to-people -people banquet, uh, dedication of the Peace Park Gardens, uh, which recognized both our sister cities in Esslingen and also in Tsubami, Japan. Uh, we also uh, attended the A Street Ale House, where Mayor Zieger uh, tapped the first keg of Oktoberfest beer, a real German mayor doing that in Sheboygan. It was really neat. And the Esslingen guests cooked up some of their favorite German foods that were served up to the public who was attending Esslingen Fest on Sunday at Three Sheeps Brewery. Uh, Rock the Block started out this week. We had two sessions on the 12th and 14th. The last session to Rock the Block will be on the 21st. This is a project with Habitat for Humanity Lakeside. It's, uh, this is their fourth uh, Rock the Block uh, event over th uh, three days this year. And the event on September 21st will be held from 9 o'clock till 3.30. If anyone's interested, they can call Habitat for Humanity and ask for Emily and he'll, she'll hook you up as a volunteer. The public is welcome to join the Glacial Lakes Conservancy in the celebration of the Willow Creek Preserve Saturday on September 28th from 1 to 3 p.m. The event will include some short speeches, a ribbon cutting, some light refreshments, and an opportunity to go on a short nature hike and explore the property's features. Just meet at the trailhead just north of Meals on Wheels off of Taylor Drive. Uh, September 21st is also Maywood Earth Ride. Maywood uh, Ride is for any age and cycling ability, individuals and families and groups. They have uh, mileage uh, courses set up for 12 miles all the way up to a 112 mile route through scenic uh, Sheboygan County and the Northern Kettle Moraine. The event includes a continental breakfast, lunch, rest stops, and refreshments. And uh, most importantly, participation supports Maywood's mission of fostering environmental stewardship through educational and outdoor experiences designed to connect our community to the natural world. Um, only in-person registration is available. The online registration has ended, so you'd have to stop out to, at Maywood or, um, or register the day of the event. Uh, beach cleanup is scheduled for September 21st. Uh, you can help clean up the Michigan, Lake Michigan be beaches by joining local, uh, no local neighborhood groups from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock to clean up the, at Deland Park, North Point Park, uh, the 3rd Street Beach, and King Park Beach. The Friends of North Point, the Friends of Peace Park, and the King Park Neighborhood Association um, will be all teaming up to make a difference in our community along with support from uh, the um, Sheboygan River Basin and, and Lakeshore Natural Resources Partnership. And then finally, on September 21st, it's going to be a really busy day, but Riverfest will be held. Uh, Riverfest is a one-day festival that will take place along Riverfront Drive and Boardwalk on Saturday the 21st from 11 o'clock till 4 o'clock. People of all ages are invited to explore the products and services offered by Harbor Center businesses through engaging in interactive activities and experiences at the booths um, and then on their main stage and, uh, and along the river. 
Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the election of a water commissioner. This is a three-year term beginning October 1st of 2019. I'd like to open up the floor for nominations. Is there anyone who'd like to be nominated? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I move the, that nominations um, be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidates with the lowest number of, of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until the candidates receive the, a majority. Is there a second? Second. Very good. Um, nominations are open. Are there any, other, any nominations? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I nominate <coughs> Gerald Van de Creek. Thank you very much for that nomination. Is there a second? Second. Okay, that nomination is before us. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? <coughs> Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I move that nominations be closed and the city clerk be instructed to cast a unanimous ballot for Gerald Van de Creek. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion's carried. Congratulations to uh, Commissioner Vanda Creek uh, for continuing another three year term. We appreciate your service. <laughs> Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 .2 through 2.9. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, mo I make a motion to receive and, fi and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items on the consent agenda? Please call in if you have any questions. Seeing none then, I'd ask the clerk to call a roll call. Ten eyes. Thank you very much. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.3 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.7 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, Item 5.1 is RC number 129 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 66 of 1920 by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen, authorized entering into a concession agreement for the shack at Valrath Park and recommends the, um, an amended resolution and revised agreement to be with the shack disc golf course LLC rather than with Dennis and Pat Patricia Weald uh, individually. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the substitute resolution with revised agreement. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, will it, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 130 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 75 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2019 budget CDBG and recommends adopting the resolution. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the uh, report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 131 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to was referred resolution number 76 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne, extending the life of tax incremental district number 11 for one year to implement affordable housing and neighborhood revitalization activities and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was wondering if we could have Chad Pelichek uh, do a brief explanation on this for the rest of the council and the citizens, uh, particularly what the amount of this uh, money is going to be and how it's going to be planned to be used in the next year or so. Thank you. Chad, can you please uh, reply to that? Sure, so the state law allows us to extend a TIF, a tax incremental financing district by one year and capture the increment generated by that district to be used towards affordable housing. So under state statute, we're supposed to use uh, a minimum of 75% of those funds to better affordable housing across our, anywhere within our community. Uh, in this case, TIF 11 is the TIF district that includes the Washington Square uh, development on the city's south side. That TIF district generates around $712,000 a year. So the intent is to capture that those funds and put them into a special revenue fund known as a neighborhood revitalization fund and be able to use it towards three distinct projects. Um, the first project is an upper floor residential rehab grant program that would be administered by the Department of Planning and Development and would allow uh, property owners within the downtown to apply for funds to uh, help develop their upper floors. A lot of the upper floors in the commercial district right now are vacant or underutilized, and the idea would be to develop those into apartments, affordable, apart affordable rent apartments that people could rent and live upstairs and bring some additional tax value. The second program is to put money into a program we ran a few years ago known as a residential and facade grant program where we would give up to $5,000 uh, for um, homeowners within targeted neighborhoods to invest in the front of their homes um, and or do landscaping projects to improve the landscaping on the outside of their property. Um, we're looking at targeting areas within the Riverbend neighborhood, which is primarily along 14th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue, um, and then the Indiana Avenue corridor as part of those master plans uh, developments. And then the last part of it would be to use some of the funds for uh, the Department of Public Works to continue to implement ADA improvements in Central City neighborhoods, particularly at crosswalks and some potential street lighting expansion, and then some funds to administer those programs. So the intent after this would be to have these funds transferred and then the city finance department and the department of planning and development would work together to close that uh, TIF district and put all those properties back on the uh, general tax levy. Thank you very much for that information. Is there any other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion passes. Next item is uh, 5.4, which is RC number 132 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 82 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a <coughs> longitudinal pipeline agreement for the construction of a storm sewer within the Union Pacific Railroad's property at North Avenue and to take all necessary steps to comply with the city's obligations under this agreement and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, with the motion is on the floor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Ten.
10 ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 is RC number 132 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred direct, uh, let's see. Um, no, it's, excuse me, it's RC number 133 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 84 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen designated in the superintendent of parks as the city's authorized representative for the purpose of the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Urban Forestry Grants for calendar year 2020 and instructing the authorized representative to submit an urban forestry grant application relating to the emerald ash borer treatment and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Nice. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is RC number 134 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. To whom was referred General Ordinance number 18 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen repealing and recreating section 74-42 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code to revise the fee schedule regarding the rental of city parks and recommends adopting the ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Alder Person Boren. Uh, I just wanted to know if these, I, I looked at all the new fees for the various uh, apartment uh, parks that are rented. Does that pretty well bring us in line with what other communities are charging for resident and non resident parks? I'll ask. Uh, Public Works Director David Beeble to respond to that. Yes, it does, Alderman. And in fact, um, we did a survey, looked at like communities such as Sheboygan, compared. We haven't really adjusted our rates in probably the last five to seven years. Um, also, this is included in our revenue projections as part of the 2020 budget. But we need to advance this because Park Day for uh, 2020 reservations is the first Monday in October, so it be in advance of the budget actually being approved. So that's why it needs to be approved this evening. If I could follow up, Mayor, uh, what, what is the anticipated additional revenue from the fee increases for 2020 approximately over what we're getting now? That's a good question. I would say we're, we're it's, it's, it's mainly probably around, I'm thinking about a 20% increase so revenues are roughly around uh, 75,000 to 80,000 roughly annually. So figure another close to 20,000 additional revenue that we're looking for for 2020. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that information. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes, one no. Motion passes. Items 5.7 through 5.9 uh, will be referred to various committees. <coughs> Under general ordinances, item 6.1 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. And the next item and other matters authorized by law, Assistant City Attorney Thomas Cameron. RO number 80-1920, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2019 and June 30th, 2021. And that'll be referred licensing uh, in public hearings. Next, we'll move on to a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. 
Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub E, Wisconsin stats where, the, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the development opportunity in the South Point Enterprise Campus. Second. Thank you for that motion support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Ten eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a three minute recess and this will end our transmission for this evening. Council contemplates adjourning in closed session. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you.